All right, coaches. Sorry about that. We had some issues there uh, with uh, with getting our stuff off the ground, um, but we I think we're running now. Um, so thanks for coming out tonight, Sam. We're going to talk about uh, the vertical passing game. Really excited. I think it's something you know that everyone has in their offense and everyone can benefit from. Um, and in the Canadian game, it's a big field, and and sometimes that space is great, but sometimes you got to use it. Uh, you know, really intelligently as well. And, and I think if you if you don't, you can put your quarterback uh, or other members of your offense in a tough spot. Um, so a couple of housekeeping notes, and this will also serve well for knowing that you guys can all hear me. Um, if you guys could uh, subscribe, if you haven't already, uh, check us out on our social media accounts, 3downDev on Twitter. And uh, if you want as well to continue to come to these uh, Tuesday night sessions, um, hopefully with a little less technical difficulties, uh, in the future, but we will be having two more uh, in the next coming weeks. And, and these are going over really well. So we are going to, I think, continue these on Tuesday nights uh, topics to come later. But next week, we're talking about defending RPOs. Uh, and then the following Tuesday on April 6th, we'll be pairing split zone power switch uh, with jet action and RPOs in the Canadian game. It helps us a ton if you guys like uh, and comment on the video as well. Um, so if you can like and comment on the video, uh, it'll be huge for us in helping us reach more coaches. Also sharing our stuff on social media really helps us reach more coaches, whether that's in a, a Instagram story or, or a retweet, uh, helps us reach more Canadian uh, coaches who are looking to get better, you know, during this time where we're all waiting to get back on the field. Um, so if, uh, if you guys could do that for us, that'd be great. Uh, it really helps us out. We're getting close to a thousand or getting closer to a thousand. Uh, and it would be huge, you know, if we could get to that, you know, before the summer um, and you guys share and helps us out a ton there. So important, you know, considerations for the vertical passing game. Um, I think it's critical that you understand what you can protect uh, and how you can protect. So, there's a lot of options. Obviously, you can move the pocket. You can, you know, drop back. You can, you know, protect with five, six, seven, eight, um, you know, upwards of guys. And and depending on what you have up front, will really dictate, you know, what you're able to do down the field. Because ultimately, when we're looking at throwing the ball vertically, um, whether that's because it's second and long or looking to take a shot, we can only make the throws we can protect. Um, and and that's something I'm going to try and speak to tonight with two real options, more of a max protection style um, and, and more of a, you know, your traditional half slide drop back. So what can you protect? The second thing is what does your best guy do best? Um, so if you've got a great, you know, in and out runner at the sticks, you want to make sure that he's doing that, um, you know, at or beyond the sticks. If we're talking about second down, um, if you've got a burner that can really stretch the field, you want to make sure they're doing that job. You want to put guys in good spots to be successful. Uh, you always want your quarterback to know what if you're hot. So what if we get pressure? So it's not an issue with protection. It's purely what if we get one more than we can block? Um, where are my answers? Versatility. Um, how can you take these vertical downfield shots, which I think the more you look at offense right now, whether it's the Chiefs, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's Alabama, whether it's, uh, you know, whether it's teams in the OUA like Western or, or the great Canadian programs, especially in the CFL, being able to take one concept and get a lot of versatility out of it. Uh, is huge. Um, and so how can you kind of take one concept and move it around um, so that you're in a really, really good position to be successful and maybe use it in multiple ways. Uh, and then it's all about Jimmy's and Joe's. The X's and O's on the, on the chalkboard are great, but ultimately it's got to be up to, you know, what can your guys do well uh, and what can your, your players execute? Um, and I think that that's critical to remember on those key situations. You want to think players, not plays. So if we're thinking shot plays here because you want to set the tone early in the game or it's, you know, two minute drill, you're trying to move the football, you know, those deep shot plays matter. Um, and you want your best guys in great situations. So looking at your priorities, you know, number one for me is does a quarterback like it. Uh, and I find my quarterback likes stuff that I teach well and that's sound and that carries over through our offense. Right. So you want to make sure that your, you know, your stuff you're doing, if you get in a tough situation like second and eight or a situation where you're down and you've got to move the ball and take shots, you want that to be something your quarterback is comfortable with. And to do that, it's got to be sound and teachable. Uh, ironically, those are the same two points as last week. We talked about second down coverages. Um, who's your top target? 
right? These are key situations. You want to get the ball to your best guy. Uh, that doesn't mean he has to be the primary route runner. It doesn't mean he has to run the same route every time. Um, but, you know, if you're looking for big plays, you're going to get your big plays out of your best players. And uh, that doesn't mean you don't spread the ball around or, or the ball doesn't go where, you know, the defense is sending it. Um, but you want to make sure that, you know, you're putting yourself in a situation to be successful. Uh, get what you need. You got to have multiple routes um, that are at or beyond the sticks. Uh, you want to try and get those chunk plays, um, it's really, really crucial that you're, you're doing that, especially on second down. you got to have multiple routes beyond the sticks. If you only have one route beyond the sticks, you know, you're probably going to have to break lots of tackles to, to be productive and get those plays you want, and that's hard to do consistently. This is a big one I think I'm learning more about uh, this year, actually, uh, and I'm interested to do some CFL study from, from 2019, but both in the OUA stuff that I've looked at and the American College stuff and just watching games, receivers catching the ball on the move is huge whether it's slant, glance, you know, a drag rope from the opposite side of the field um, or verticals, obviously, is, is the easiest one. When receivers catch the ball on the move, I think they're really dangerous. And, and that, you know, I think that that bears true um, for sure across all levels of football, whether it's high school uh, or, or at the, you know, the higher levels of the game. And you got to have a, a pressure plan. How are you going to pick it up? Where are you going to go uh, when, when the ball needs to get out? Uh, and I think if you do those, you know, those five things consistently, your vertical passing game is a great chance to be successful. So we're going to talk about two, uh, well, uh, really two big picture ideas. Uh, and one of them is four verticals and nothing, you know, revolutionary there. Everyone has some form of four verticals in their offense. Uh, what I've had my most success with, and what we ran most recently uh, when I was when I was with Laurier as well as the Cambridge Lions, uh, my summer program, and we do have some high school film on here. So, you know, I know a lot of the stuff we show is whether it's pro or, or college or OUA. And I know a lot of high school coaches looking at that and go, oh, you know, how does that translate to our, our side of the ball? Um, and so I do have some high school film, some summer league OPFL film in here today um, as well, which I think is great to see it at, at that level. Uh, and the sixth concept is, uh, is an old school air raid for vert concept. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can run this. Um, and to me, what, what I like the most about it uh, or the version of it that we run um, is you create option route to maximize your ability to attack space, right? I think that's critical uh, in any phase of your offense. Now offenses are more efficient because they're attacking available space. Uh, they're not screwed into, you know, the running back going to one place uh, or even, you know, handing the ball to the running back when you look at RPOs and the passing game is the same. Um, you're looking at being able to throw the ball vertically uh, and attack the space the defense gives you based on coverage uh, and try and get guys on the move. Um, the process is consistent. We'll dive into the process here in a sec. Um, so in terms of the read, it, we get a lot out of this concept. It's not just the full field. We'll get into the half field version as well. Um, and you need to read the relationships between defenders and space. That's the only challenge with this. Anytime you're running option routes or making receivers make decisions beyond the line of scrimmage, um, you know, they have the opportunity to make a good decision. They have an opportunity to make a mistake. Uh, but I think when you when you hear how we coach it, uh, and no one's perfect, but I think the the advantage of having um, those downfield decisions has paid off a lot for us. And, and our guys really like the ownership of having to make those downfield decisions. So this is actually the version I like the most, uh, which would be out of uh, 23 or, or two back, and the H is replaced by the fullback or tight end uh, running that underneath route. So for us, every uh, we do a little bit of R four stuff, um, which is something I'd encourage coaches to uh, to look into. It's a really interesting thing I learned about uh, last year. We had a process space on the field, so we call our two outside receivers our gift receivers. So they're going to run uh, an outside release fade or a stop, uh, just based on what space they have. So if they're capped, meaning that they have a defender whose hips and leverage and and cushion uh, prevents them from going vertical. Uh, when they get to uh, six yards, they're going to push to eight and come back, kind of come back straight down the stem and stay wide. They're going to force underneath defenders to push to take that away. Okay. So in this instance here, this receiver would be capped. Okay. So he would run the stop. That's going to force the halfback to push. In this instance here, the receiver would be uncapped. So he can now go vertical. That's going to stress the high player to his side. Um, if it's zone, okay. And if it's man, it gives us a vertical option. Um, I'm going to focus on what I call the seam reads um, in terms of how we process this out. So we're going to start with our rhythm throw, which is on what we call our lock seam. So there's no bender option here. You can go to the post, okay, with a skinny post if you are capped. So if we get a, a high halfback here, 
that when that receiver gets that critical depth of about 10 to 12 yards, there's no way they can go by. Okay. Then we can get skinny uh, and go to the middle of the field, not really flat into the middle of the field. We want to go on top of what's ever in the middle of the field. And we're looking to get open right now vertically. So if we're running this, um, we can take a best release, but it's really, really important. We don't get tied up at the line of scrimmage. We're going to ins them to try and create space. Ideally we inside release the half. Okay. And then we look to work uh, vertically down the field. If we're capped, we can go to the middle of the field. That's where our quarterback's going to look first. Um, so if he does not get a gift on the outside, meaning he has an immediate access throw, he can take a punch one uh, and let that thing go, whether it's the vertical fade or the stop. If he doesn't feel like he has a gift on the outside, he's going to start his progression uh, on uh, on the lock seam, whichever side of the field the lock seam is on. So in, in 23, the lock seems to the boundary. He's going to take his punch three. When he hits that last step of his drop, he's either going to trigger the lock seam or he's going to hitch and drive up to our second window, uh, which is what we call the read seam. And the read seam has the opportunity uh, to run a bender. I think, again, something a lot of people do off, off of four verts. So we're going to look to push vertical. And again, when we get to that uh, 10 to 12 yard critical depth uh, zone in the field, we're going to look to see if we're capped. So if this receiver, or sorry, if this defensive back is the high player, okay, so the quarterback's staring into the boundary. Let's say that that takes, you know, the free safety there. Okay, now we're going to read, snap our eyes, and hitch, reset our feet back to this read seam. Uh, if the field half does not cap the read seam or a player to the field side, I should say, doesn't cap the read seam, then we're going to make that vertical throw right now. That's your classic free safety middle of the field read. If that second seam is capped, now we're going to run the bender, okay, and look to settle in space in the middle of the field, show our numbers to the quarterback, uh, and the quarterback should be able to put that throw on the, the player almost immediately um, when they come out of that bender. We're looking to wrap the underneath defender. Okay, so this Sam gets underneath and and is able to play this, uh, this bender route, okay, or this second seam that's bending into the middle of the field. Now we should have our under, which we call the witch route, um, snapping back across underneath the Sam. We've got to win this with a chair step on the mic. We can't get a receiver covered by the mic. Okay. So as we look at this here, we have all this space to run into. We should be able to run away from the mic and we'll use a chair step to set him up. If the mic pushes this uh, H receiver does have the option to sit. So if the mic wants to push so that we can't run the chair step and snap by him, then we'll, we'll drop this off in the middle of the field. The quarterback's reading one to the lock two to the read and three back down uh, to the H underneath, uh, creating a nice high low progression there. Um, and, and hopefully we're able to take a shot to one of these two seams, if not throw the ball beyond the sticks to this bender route. If this Sam does an incredible job or there's a linebacker or an underneath player that's underneath the read seam and a defender capping it. Now we should have no one left uh, on the under the back is just going to run a check, a check swing back to the side. We call that a release route. Again, R4 terminology, which we don't use wholesale. We don't use the whole thing, um, but uh, we use some of the terminology. And ultimately, if the quarterback is going to now work through his progression, he's seen this route. Everything's covered. Everyone's dropping out. Maybe they're in drop eight. Okay, he's going to look to hit his release route or run the football. So here's our first film. I'm hoping that this plays. Right now it's not. Here we go. This is our first run here with film, so I'm hoping that uh, that we are able to that it is it is solid for us. We'll see. I'm gonna try and present that again. So this is what we call our lock seam. So this is uh, Cambridge Lions program uh, that I work with. And, you know, here we're running this out of two by two. You're going to see the fullback run the under. Our W receiver is running the lock seam. Okay. And our, uh, our Y receiver to the field is running that read seam. 
So you see here, quarterback drops back on rhythm, uh, and he's going to throw to his first read there. Okay, as the coverage, the underneath coverage backs up. Sorry, we're clicking through here. We're reading this lock seam all the way here. He really kind of throws them down. Um, this is really a capped route. We probably should have read that we have a gift here that we could just take. Okay, but you see how quickly you can get that ball out to the first seam. And again, we're catching the ball moving. So that's an on rhythm throw to the lock seam. Here's the second one. Uh, and, and this really here, I think, does a good job of of highlighting some of the things we're looking for. So here again, we're running the fullback on the underneath route back to the field. Our lock seam is in the boundary. You'll see our quarterback does a good job of starting with his eyes on his rhythm throw. Okay. And he's, what we're trying to do is force a vertical defender to cover the lock seam. If the lock seam is uncapped, we're going to throw the lock seam. Now I'd like him to make this throw without a hitch. In my opinion, the ball should already be gone. This is, this was his first game with us. Okay, but you see the bind, it puts the free safety in. We've taken both the corners off the board with the outside players. Uh, it looks like there's a coverage bust here to the field, whether this should be quarters and the free should be rotating to the field or cover one and he should be running with it. Okay, you'll see the, the free safety gets stuck right here on the tracks. This is great spacing um, for our, our vertical player here. Um, and really, if he lets this go um, any earlier, I'm happy with it. Um, ultimately we get a throw and a completion, but you see the bind it puts the free safety in when you take those two outside players off the board, our read seam is uncapped, probably would have had an easier throw there. Taking a look at this one here is in a big drive in the fourth quarter. We're going back to our bread and butter concept. Okay, so we're going vertical here. I think this is uh, second and 15. Okay, so our quarterback's not really taking the gift routes, which I understand. All right, we get a good release here from the from the Y. They're capping the, uh, the lock seam here. So our quarterback brings his eyes back to the field. Okay, and you see we get the, the coverage out of position and we're able to hit that seam ball to the field. This last one is a, is a practice clip, but it, it shows the, the concept well, I think, with the bender. So this is out of 32. So now our read seems actually in the boundary, okay? So when we run this full field, the three receiver side has the, uh, the under route, the lock seam, and a gift. The two receiver side has the read seam and the opposite gift here. You're going to see the defense backing off, you know, really playing off. This is second and 12 for us here situationally. So we look at the lock seam. It's capped vertically. We bring our eyes back to the read seam. It's capped vertically. So now we're going to wrap this linebacker. Okay. And we're going to put, we're going to high load the linebacker to this side. Okay. He gets stuck on the witch route. And we're able to come back to the middle of the field. Okay, and pick up a first down and second along. So those are kind of our basic options off our four verts. Now, what I actually really like about it is we carry this throughout our whole passing game. Um, so we'll use this with our quick game uh, as well. So say it's first down, I think taking shots is super important, but what you don't want to be in is one of those situations where you're throwing the ball vertically and the defense has it covered, right? They're playing off. Maybe they're playing off man and, and you're going to struggle to run by them or it's cover four and the defense does a great job being sound. You don't want to let that deter you from taking shots. You want to have the opportunity to take shots as frequently as you can and then have good opportunities for the football uh, to get where the defense is sending it. So we'll pair this with our quick game here just with a simple stop concept. Um, when we do this, the inside player, whatever your quick game is, you can run this with you know fade and, and out from the number two week. You can run this. We love it off double slant. Um, you know, under like a, even a curl flat, you could run this with a ton of, a uh, ton of things to that side, even bubble, um, even with screen over there. Um, and basically we're trying to force a three on two. So we're trying to force the defense to commit three defenders because this gift route can go vertical. So an on top player, and then two guys underneath to handle those routes underneath. 
Uh, and if they go three on two, we should be able to get a vertical stretch in the middle of the field. Okay. So again, this is capped, uncapped, uh, and the gift route here, um, we're sitting underneath. So if we get say cut and the half is off, right. We're going to run the corner out. The half is off and we should be able to make this throw, uh, off a quick game. Okay. If they're able to cap the vertical, okay. Then we're going to come back, uh, to our, our, our four verticals concept. Okay. But from our half field positioning. So here we're actually gonna have the H run the lock seam. So in our half field stuff, the, our half field six, I should say the H or the three receiver, he's going to run the lock seam from the opposite side of the field. So instead of running that lock seam from the boundary, we're going to get to that same spot on the field, just from the opposite side of the field, kind of your traditional three by one, uh, four vertical. So we're going to take any gift we have here to the quick game. Uh, and we'll go with a punch one. If we're going to throw that, if we take our punch and we don't like the quick game, uh, we're then going to get into our three step punch three, and we're going to throw on rhythm to this first lock seam again, it's locked. Okay. So there's no option to bend there. Okay. Then we're going to get to our read seam. So if, if we take the free safety off the board here, okay, now we're going to come to our read seam. And if he's capped, we can throw the bender. If he's uncapped, we're hopefully throwing a touchdown right down the seam uh, on that hash mark. We have our gift out here again. So if we get a field corner that's way off, or we can always take that. Uh, if we get press in a matchup, we can always take that. Uh, and then what I like doing with this is getting our check release back to the field. So we have that route still. Uh, if we don't get pressure, replacing underneath the read seam. So our quarterback would uh, look to throw this off, a hit, off of a punch one. If he takes his punch and he doesn't feel like he can fit the ball into the quick game because the defense is expanding and taking away the space, then we're going to work through the vertical rhythm three, uh, three and a hitch to the read, three a hitch and a reset back underneath to the back. And like I said, you can mix this with any quick game. Second and long, if you're in a position in the field where you might go for it on third down, um, this is great too. So say you got a second and nine and you think you're going to get quarters. Now you throw the stop route, get eight back, go for it on third down. Um, if, if you're in a field position with, where that's a possibility, it's a great option. Um, and it sets up double moves, which is going to be the next thing we get to, which I love. So here it is with double slants. It's probably my favorite version. Lots of room for the double slants to the field. Um, and you're able to get that. I should say rhythm and read, not double read. Um, but, you know, you're able to get, you know, that vertical option on the back side of it. Again, now with the swing underneath of, uh, underneath of that read seam where ultimately you can get uh, back to the bender. So here's an example of us running this with quick game at Laurier. Um, you know, Western's in an off coverage here, right? They're not trying to give up the shot. This is later in the game. You know, they're up. They're trying to keep us from scoring the football. Uh, third down situation. So we run our quick game here um, to try and just get the first down. If they back out, right, if they play two on two, we think we can take that. We get three on two here, okay, and this – the, the quick game, our quarterback doesn't like it. He's going to come back to the field. The lock seam you see here working to the boundary hash mark. It's going to take the free safety off the field. Uh, and Brendan McCracken does a great job recognizing he's uncapped here on the vertical. Oh, we lost it there. Sorry about that. Uncapped on the vertical. Okay, and you see our quarterback come back to it. Connor makes a great throw, six points. You can kind of see his eyes here as well. He's looking punch one, three step to the the, the lock seam. Okay, three step and hitch back to the read seam. Okay, a great shot for a touchdown. Here's our next one, which isn't running for me. There we go. So here we're running this uh, again off a quick game. So we're just running the fade out over here to the uh, to the boundary. We got our three man six to the field. So our H is working that lock seam across. Our Y is running uh, the read seam vertically. Now our, our H gets walled out here way too much. He's got to get across the field. So I would I would try and have him go inside release. Okay, we don't want to try and outside release this. We're going to get stuck. But he does fight back across. And you see this window the three on two creates. So here's our three on two to defend the vertical, which you're going to get you know, in most quarters coverages. And you see the void that that puts now in the middle of the field. So now Connor does a great job of resetting his feet, um, you know, and avoiding some pressure here and getting back to the middle of the field. We see that void that's created. We would have liked to have been in it earlier. Okay. But you see here, their only option is now if he takes away that, that lock seam, 
Now we're going to be able to read off the cap of this read seam and either run our dig or bend our route or stay pushing vertical. Connor's able to reset, find the lock seam for a big play for us. So the next thing we really like off this, and this is maybe my favorite thing that, that we did off it, especially at a, at a younger age group. Um, you know, I think that this could be really beneficial. And we had some, we've had some great uh, double move route runners uh, that I've gotten to work with, whether that's at the Lions level, a guy like Ryan Melvaso or, uh, you know, at Laurier having Curly, Brenton, and Tay, guys who are great off two moves. Um, so we've done a lot of stuff off play action, and this is actually how we've protected our RPOs a lot uh, in the teams I've worked with as well. So this is off an RPO look. So we're going to show the RPO to the field. Um, and, you know, we're going to RPO a ton with double slants. Now we're going to show the double slant and sluggo the, uh, the wide out. Okay, so that's going to become our first read uh, where we're trying to throw the sluggo. If we get pressure, the inside guy can still run the slant. So if he gets a linebacker blitz into his side, he can still run the slant, become hot. The quarterback can uh, forget the fake. Okay, and the running back will pick that backer up uh, and then we'll throw the ball in there. This is basically, we're going to run like an aggressive half slide. Um, all of our other stuff has been, you know, your traditional half slide, 60, 61 um, type protections. Uh, we like pop in the center. Um, that That's more of a preference of programs that I've worked with. Some people like half slide. Uh, if you get edge pressure, that, that's totally up to you. Um, here we do it more aggressively and show the RPO look, make it look like we're running the inside zone lock and trying to throw this slant and then sluggo the outside uh, and take that vertical if we can. If they go three over two to take away, we feel if we get two on two, if we get man, we're going to win the double move. If we get three on two, now let's attack the space they're giving us. Just like in the last, the quick game example, now we can come back to rhythm our lock seam uh, and uh, read our read seam, reset and hitch to it. And we can always take the gift. If we've got a corner way off or a press corner, we can always take that gift. Um, over to this side here, this is off of play action. So now we're going to run this off our power play action. Look, we're going to run the sluggo. This guy's drawn too far out. He could be tighter. Okay. Sluggo off the play action. That's where we're going to start and work our way back to our three verticals uh, on the way back. Um, in terms of uh, strengths for this, it protects your RPOs. Um, you're going to widen the mid range, uh, windows, um by sucking up the linebackers that's huge right especially you're trying to create clean and throws to your quarterback you're not gonna have to rely on checking the ball down underneath hopefully you're gonna pull those linebackers up uh, and be able to take a shot over the top so here's the first one uh this is just the double move this is just ente on and out and up okay so you're gonna see here again we're a little too uh tight with this lock seam we should be working uh, our lock seam across the field attacking this hash mark so that our read seam has room to operate. Okay, but you can see here, because we run this vertical concept, they're four on the roof. This field player is really not uh, given the help that this corner is going to need on the double move. We got this corner on an island. This guy's inside the hash three or four yards. Okay, our quarterback seeing that, and we're going to take this one-on-one -on -one double move every time. We get the double move. We send it because he's being held, okay? And again, we could do a better job of getting across the field here, um, but he's being held by this backside lock seam, okay? And that's what is allowing us to take this shot. Beautiful throw, elite catch, touchdown. This second one, we'll take a look at. Okay, now we're going to get backside. Oh. Now we're going to get backside. Okay, so we have the double move onto the field. Okay, again, the field uh, the field side defensive back here is a little tucked in as well. Um, probably could have came back to this. The defender's off and has open hips. He's got about a five-yard cushion. Here we're actually running a bang wheel um, off of this. And, you know, our quarterback's looking at it going, he's got open hips and a five-yard cushion. That's capped. We're going to come back now to our... Uh, to our four vert side. So you'll see here our lock seam is going to take the backside hash mark player off the board. Now putting this corner in a bind. Okay. So now we're reading capped uncapped. Okay. We've, you know, we've cleared that window. We're going 
Uh, we've eaten into this cushion. He's got about one yard cushion. We feel like we can run by that. All right. And we're going to stay skinny down the numbers here. We ran it with an out on the backside um, as opposed to the stop. You, know, you have that available to you as well. Take the shot. Great throw. Great catch. What I really like about these, you know, is we pair the, the quick game uh, with the double move stuff. It looks really similar. The quarterbacks read out the same. Um, but again, it gives us an opportunity to take another shot. So you can put any quick and go in there. It could be out and up, it could be stop and go, um, you know, it could be sluggo, whatever your quick game is, you know, you can work that into it. Um, you know, even bubble and go. Um, and I think it's a really great way, especially at the high school level, to try and take advantage of, of aggressive defenses and give your quarterback, again, something they're comfortable with. They're coming back to that four vertical concept, lock seam, read seam, or check it down. Um, and, and that's, I think, again, when you're looking for carryover, I think that's important. So the second concept I want to talk about uh, is one that, you know, we've had a lot of success with. Um, and I think you're seeing all over football right now. Uh, McVay and the Rams run it a ton. The Chiefs run it a ton. Um, and it's, it's something that especially if you're a team that, you know, needs to protect uh, a little bit more, you might not be comfortable in, in six-man protection. Uh, in terms of taking vertical shots or you have a really good pass rusher that week you're dealing with. It's a way for you to take, I think, sustainable uh, vertical shots while being in a seven or eight, even eight man protection. Um, and I think sometimes that can be harder than we think um, just because, it, you know, if you're dropping eight in the Canadian game, if you only got three guys out in the route, you know, you want to make sure that, you know, you're, you're attacking space effectively because the numbers matchup isn't great. So just a heavy double post concept. Um, Great protections. All right. You can run a variety of play actions out of this. I, I drew up kind of our base way of doing it. Um, but you can run a ton, whatever your base run play is, whatever that drop, whatever that protection is, you can keep guys in. This is great if you're 21 personnel, um, you know, and whether you're doing that, I'll show it here out of two back or three back um, or tight end and two backs. Uh, lots of options there. You get a great run action. That's what the NFL is using it for. You know, you're really selling, you know, the run action and you're creating, um, you know, one-on-ones, man coverage down the field. Uh, the, the defensive coordinator is in zone, but you only have so many guys dropping because of, of how hard the run action is. And it's an easy one, two, three progression, and you can dress it up a bunch of ways. Downsides, you only got three in the route, and it's a little more matchup based. So we've really liked this, you know, at Laurier, we've done a version of this. Uh, and, you know, we've had elite guys that, that can win those matchups. Um, if you're not going to win a lot of matchups, uh, one-on-one, -on -one, then, you know, you want to have a little more of maybe the double move stuff uh, or that type of thing. You can use the same play action. Just, you know, if you're not able to run by guys, um, then, you know, creating opportunities for your guys to, to get separation through double moves, you know, is, is probably a good way to go as well. So just looking at this, our first post is honestly a lot like the lock seam. I really, I really like this because it, it, it's not the same as four verts, but you, to me, you get to similar spots. Um, so our Y here is going to inside release and try and cross at about the 14 yard line flying across. If this corner travels with the X, this can get flattened out and become like a deep over, uh, but the quarterback will flatten them out with the ball. Um, you don't have to actually change your route. We're trying to pull the free safety out of the middle of the field. Our X is just going to skate down and run the under. Okay. And then, you know, this post route, I think there's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, we've done it really, really skinny, uh, and just kind of let that receiver find the space again, when you get, you know, a tight end and a fullback in the game and you're getting hard play action for us, this came off one of our best runs. Um, you know, we were, we were able to let our Z find the space and be skinnier or flatter, you know, based on, uh, based on the coverage and, and how the leverage that the corner was trying to play him with. Uh, I think you want to start really skinny. If you do get capped. Um, you know, I think having the ability to bend it into the middle of the field, similar to a read seam, uh, can be really helpful in terms of the pro here. Uh, we're selling this kind of off of our off tackle. So we're actually going to try and settle in the strong a gap, hard run sell, you know, whether you show the ball or open hand, um, you know, that's up to you, but really selling the run with our fake. Um, one of the other challenges here is the footwork is different for the quarterback. Obviously it's not straight drop back. Um, and this is for here, for us, out of 21 personnel. Um, but we're going to have our fullback block the front side end. Everyone else is blocking down. Um, and then our, our H or our second fullback 
Uh, they are they're gonna have the front side of the protection and the running back after the fake is gonna bounce to the back side of the protection. Um, you can play this a lot of different ways. You can have the running back go front side and keep the H back side or cross the H. Whatever your base run is, you can set it up that way. Um, but if if they're able to, you know, have a player underneath and on top of this, and underneath and on top of this, you should have a freebie underneath. Um, and if not, being able to run this bender and having all this space to work in now, you can really take you know, throws your quarterback doesn't need to be as accurate, should be able to widen the windows a bit. And again, if you're, you know, able to run the football at all, this is a great first down call. Um, and, and you'll see some film of it for us here. This is also a staple in Alabama system, um, which I've done some videos on. And I think translates really well to the Canadian game if you're looking to take some shots. So here's just another version off a of switch release. So now your Zed's going to come down and, and run that hard post. Uh, your Y is going to run the skinny post on top. Um, the Y, this is great because you get the Y inside the corner. So now if you take the free safety off the board, you can really open up that inside window, um, to, to throw. And it shortens the throw a little bit for the quarterback, um, for high school, you know, uh, coaches, which could be super beneficial depending on, you know, if you've got a young guy in there or, you know, just a quarterback, that's not super accurate throwing the ball vertically, uh, you're able to shorten the throw here. I have it out of, uh, 31, two back. So this would kind of be off, you know, like, I guess a split zone look. Um, where the H is going to kind of take the running back's job from the first picture. He can leak back out into the flat as a check release if you want, don't have to, uh, and your running back's going to replace front side. Just another option, but again, you're solid, you know, aid in protection. O-line's really down blocking. Um, you know, they're not in a situation where, you know, passing off stunts and stuff is easy. It's not man-to-man. -man. Um, you know, it's, it's really a safer version of a full slide protection. Um, and, and it gets you the opportunity to, I think, really get to the bottom of your drop off a hard action, hitch up and deliver the ball vertically downfield. So here's another good uh, practice clip of it. We have a lot of young guys in here, but it was a great, uh, you know, kind of look at how you can pull the free safety off the board. So you'll see the X skate down, hard action. You see everyone step up, um, you know, even here. The spacing is great between our two uh, receivers. You see how much space there is in the boundary for this uh, Y or who's ever running the hard post. If he's got a trail defender, he can stay more vertical. Uh, if he's got a defender on his top shoulder, he can really bend it across here. Okay, and you see the free safety takes it. Now we're dropping the hammer on top to the second post. Uh, and this is a great throw and catch down the field. This is it in a game here in a big spot. Um, you know, we're in one of the great games I've coached in, two amazing teams. Um, and we're in overtime here. I think this is the first or second play, second play, uh, second and five. We're looking to take a shot to, you know, one of the best receivers in the country, Brenton Hall. Um, and, you know, we're going hard action. You see them get sucked up in the front. Okay, and now they do a pretty good job on the back end trying to stay on top. Here you see Brenton stay skinny because he's got a player in the middle of the field. Um, you see all the space here to work back, and you see uh, the H slip back underneath. This is actually a good one for the check release. This is the cross from the H, and that slip back into the boundary flat. So now if you get the corner trying to cheat to take away this, you should be able to get this back out into the flat. So you see there, um, you know, we probably have this option pretty clean. We're able to get on top here uh, and take the shot. Double coverage. Brenton makes a great play. Probably not where, you know, the concept would take the football, but matchups are important too. Um, and, you know, certainly with one of the best players in the country there, it's a good place to go with the football. Here's the protection. You see just how solid we are, right? There's no nothing in, in the quarterback's face because we're able to protect. Here with seven, we do get Peterman out, so it's not full eight. Okay, but you see that just the down blocks there, especially if you have a team like Waterloo does a great job stunning out of their 30, right? There's some movement here, but we're able to get down blocks and, and you know, our quarterback's able to step up confidently in the pocket. Free safety comes off the board, take our shot for six. Just some, uh, some variations off of it uh, that Alabama runs that I like. So again, the switch motion, and now you can sell uh, that the Z is going to run uh, that hard under post. OK, 
Okay, you're going to get the free safety hanging in the middle of the field and then snap back out. So this would be great, like you saw in that last video, where the free safety is now going to switch and try and cover this, and the field, field corner and field half are going to try and cap that vertical. Now when you snap this uh, this uh, out route back out, um, again, you have lots of time to run that route because of the hard play action. Um, you know, I think it's a really tough sell uh, for the free safety to now try and play back into the big Canadian field. Again, you could run this a little deeper too, depending on the situation, but you know, it's a great way to get that Z back, you know, out to the field and into space. And again, the read works the same way. Okay. Except now we're going to go one to two to three back down. Then of course you can run the wheel off it. Um, you know, like any good out concept, you want to have the wheel off it. So now you're going to show that maybe you get the switch. Okay. And now you isolate this corner. He's looking to jump the out. Uh, and then you can run the wheel. So I'll try and get this, uh, see if this film will work here. So this is Bama uh, and uh, Ole Miss. I rolled back a little. There we go. So they're running this out of the stack. Okay, so you see off the hard play action. You'll see the switch. Okay, and now they're going to run the wheel and take the shot off it. So, um, you know, that one's obviously a little bit more of a vertical shot. Um purely right with with all the routes ending up vertical there no mid-level throw um but i think you know if you come back to what we started with if i can roll this back here talking about you know priorities and, and what makes the difference in the vertical passing game can you protect it huge question if you can um i like having more guys out in the route obviously there's a place for for play action and, you know, I'll really pound the table for if you run RPOs, you have to double move off them off play action. Um, it's just too effective to not have it be part of what you do. Um, but depending on how you can protect is going to designate what your vertical pass game looks like. If you are young up front, you struggle to protect, you're playing a great player, having, uh, you know, seven or eight in protection can give you a chance to get the throws off vertically. And it can also clean up windows for you. You know, if you have a young quarterback that needs to see guys a little more open, um, you know, you're going to get guys a little more open uh, at times with the uh, uh, with the three or four guys out in the route off the hard play action. Um, but if, you know, if your quarterback is comfortable, having more options forces the defense to cover more space. Um, what does your, your best guy do best? Um, you know, we we had a lot of success in Cambridge uh, with that four vertical concept because our guys were pretty smart. It fit what we did. Um, so we gave them a little more options in terms of the route running. Uh, and, and finding space. If your best guy is a pure speed guy, the double post concept might be, you know, better for you. Not that there's not a place for that though, obviously in four verts, you know, what if you're hot, you got to know where you're going to go with the football, the under route. Um, if I come to it here. Okay. This rush route here is key. If you're going to run the, if you're going to run the, the four verts in terms of getting the ball out hot, obviously if you pair it with quick game, it's perfect, right? That's why I love um, if I can get to it here. Probably my favorite version of this is right here off the double slant. If you're hot, we're throwing the slant. Uh, if we're not, we're able to, you know, work through the slant progression to our backside four vert. Uh, if we're in the double post stuff, you know, you should be able to pick it up. You're protecting with eight. Um, the wide, the rusher should be coming wide enough that you can probably get that first post off or the under uh, worst case scenario. And in terms of getting your quarterback to like what you like, uh, that's a question I got the other day. I think it comes down to how well you teach it. I found when, when my quarterbacks, weren't comfortable or confident with something it was really on me and, and you know how i went about actually coaching the progression right people like what they understand and and being able to throw the ball vertically is a stressful situation um but every offense is going to have to do it and you're gonna have to coach your quarterback up you know to to understand what he's looking at uh and and make confident decisions and i think the last thing i liked about these two concepts is the amount of versatility within them so we ran you know in summer program you know, we ran even another version uh, of double move off our four, off our four verts. Um, but really that four verts was our vertical passing game. And we would just dress it up in different formations and, and different quick game combos, uh, you know, that I, I think allowed us to have a tremendous amount of carryover uh, and help guys be confident. That's something in the future I'd like to do even more of um, just seeing the response from the players, especially the quarterback position, having that carryover, I think is huge.
Let's get back to that last slide here. So like I said, guys, next week, thanks for bearing, th bearing through uh, some of our technical difficulties there, uh, but we got it done. Um, and so thanks for sticking that out. Next Tuesday, defending RPOs. I'm really excited. Probably the, the thing I've spent the most time learning about in the last year is, is defense's response to RPOs in Canada uh, and where I think it's going. Uh, so I'm really excited for that. Uh, and then an offensive trend the following week, you know, that you're seeing whether it's the NFL level uh, or the, the U sport level, it's huge, multiple offenses in the OUA and across the country, really getting a lot out of these concepts. So split zone and power switch, um, as well as using jet action and RPOs with it. Uh, we'll, we'll be releasing more live uh, clinic conversations and we're going to have some other guest coaches on live as well. Um, so really excited for that. We have some huge guests coming up uh, that I'll be announcing later this week. I'm really, really excited about uh, from both sides of the border. Um, and again, if you could like and subscribe, follow us on our various social medias and leaving a comment on here um, actually helps with us with the algorithm. So uh, if you could comment on the video, like the video, subscribe, um, and we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for being here. If anyone has any questions, um, I'm actually not looking at the chat right now, uh, but I can pull that up. If anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer them as we go here.